The New York Knicks look dead set heading into next season to either play Josh Hart or RJ Barrett spot minutes at the backup power forward position. But if you take a look around the NBA today, you'll see that there are key, notable free agents available that the New York Knicks could sign to play that position right now. And one of those key free agents actually used to be a former first round pick for the New York Knicks. We're going to look into who that player is and if the New York Knicks should re-sign him today. We're also going to look at a key addition the New York Knicks recently added to their coaching staff as they picked up a Milwaukee Bucks player development coach. We're going to look into who they picked up and if this could mean anything in the grand scheme of things if the New York Knicks look to add Giannis potentially in the future. We're going to break down this and so much more today. Let's get started. Kevin Knox, a former first round pick for the New York Knicks, is apparently available in free agency. You guys remember Kevin Knox, the former first round pick of the New York Knicks. The New York Knicks selected Kevin Knox with the ninth pick in the 2018 draft. So I know if you guys follow the New York Knicks, you do remember him. A lot of people actually remember that draft, not because the New York Knicks picked up Kevin Knox, but because the New York Knicks could have, and a lot of people actually wanted the Knicks to pick up Michael Porter Jr., who currently is a star and a champion for the Denver Nuggets. Now, a lot of injury concern is the reason why he fell so far and the New York Knicks decided not to pick him up. But in the grand scheme of things, looking back at it all, the Knicks absolutely should have picked him up and not even touched Kevin Knox. But unfortunately, the Knicks did pick up Kevin Knox, and here we are. But according to Sports Illustrated, this summer, Kevin Knox became a free agent, actually on August 25th, and he still remains available to be signed by any team in the league as of today. To remind you, Kevin Knox averaged 6.6 .6 points, and 2.8 rebounds per contest while shooting 45.8% from the field and 34.9% from the three-point range this season. So he did play a little bit this season, didn't do a lot and didn't have that much production, but it is key to note that he is available and he is a forward. He does play the power forward position. He is young still and the New York Knicks did like him before, maybe they still see something in him. They can bring him back and potentially have him play some backup spot power forward minutes behind Julius Randle since he not only naturally plays that position, but he is in an opportunity where the New York Knicks need that position in terms of having a backup. So everything would fit for the New York Knicks to bring him back. But the only issue is if the Knicks remember him playing for them, his motor was very, very low, and that was one of the main issues. He lost his starting. His motor is very, very low, and that was one of the main reasons he lost his starting position with the New York Knicks. And that's why he was on the bench for so long, and he couldn't thrive off the bench. And then after a couple of years, the New York Knicks decided to trade him away along with a pick to get Cam Reddish. And that's exactly what they did. So we never got to see what the Kevin Knox experience led to. But he is available, like we mentioned, in free agency. So if the New York Knicks want another chance at it, believe there's still talent there, and believe that they can cultivate it and develop it, especially after trading away Obi Toppin, and you didn't have a draft pick anyway this year, maybe it makes sense to take a flyer, sign him to a very low, inexpensive contract, and see if you can get his value up and see if he can turn into anything. Because if you can get his value up and turn him into a player that at least has some type of value in the league, then maybe you can either utilize him yourself or trade him in a package with another player for a piece that you can use to build with. But it all favors the Knicks. So I don't mind the signing. The only thing is for me with Knox, it's his energy and his motor. If he has the same energy and motor that he's always had, especially what he used to have with the Knicks, I'm good. I don't need that. There are a lot of better 
key power forwards or key free agents available that I would rather have the Knicks sign than pick up Kevin Knox again. But if he's corrected that behavior and all that potential is still there, which I believe it is, I don't mind the Knicks re-signing him and giving him a chance, but the Knicks would actually have to give him a chance. I did want to mention that Kevin Knox is 24 years old. He did spend three and a half seasons with the Knicks. And then this past year, he played 63 regular season games for the Portland Trailblazers and Detroit Pistons. I do want to say his production, again, wasn't a lot. He wasn't used a lot. And when he was used, he didn't put up the greatest numbers, wasn't that efficient. But he's young, 24 years old. He still has a lot of room to grow, still has a high upside in my opinion, and still has development that he hasn't even tapped into yet. So if the Knicks want to experiment with that again and experiment with that project, I'm all for it. But let me know what you think, guys. Comment below. Would you give Kevin Knox right now another opportunity with the New York Knicks? Let me know in the comments. The New York Knicks recently added a new video coordinator to their head coaching staff. Now, this is important to note because if you remember in the lawsuit the New York Knicks filed with Toronto, one of the key members noted in that lawsuit was Ike Azotam. And his role for the New York Knicks, among being a stat person for the Knicks, was part of being a video coordinator. So that role apparently the New York Knicks looked to fill, and they filled it. According to New Jersey News, a former UMD assistant coach, Carson Shanks, actually joined the New York Knicks recently. Shanks was on the Bulldog coaching staff from 2019 to 2021. Carson Shank is a former men's basketball assistant coach, and he continues to climb up the ranks in the NBA. Shanks will be joining the New York Knicks as an assistant video coordinator for this upcoming season. It's interesting to note that he spent the past two years with the Milwaukee Bucks as a player developmental coach and video assistant. So among everything else, one of the key things you're going to take away from this, because I know I took away from the same exact thing. He worked with the Bucks? Yes, he did, as a player developmental coach. So, let the ties to Giannis begin. Let the ties of people saying, oh, that's why the New York Knicks hired him, in a way to hopefully, potentially, get Giannis away from the Bucks if and when he asked for a trade. That's another video for another time, and we can definitely entertain that. But I want to go ahead and say this. It was key for the New York Knicks to replace Ike Azotam, especially given this lawsuit and everything that went on. So I'm glad they went ahead and filled the position of need. And given what everybody's been saying about this guy that they hired and everything that's been written about him, it does seem like it was a great hire. And it was a very solid hire as well, too. He seems to have a lot of NBA experience as well. And he seems like he's climbing the ranks in a positive way. And that's why the Carson Shanks edition, I really like it and appreciate it. And the New York Knicks actually did it kind of secretively and under the radar because it really wasn't announced. Not a lot of people covered it. And if you didn't go looking for the information, you probably wouldn't have found it. But I'm glad that they did this. It is a key connection to the buck, so I will say that. But I will also say it fills a position of need. I'm glad they did this amongst the lawsuit with the Raptors because they needed to do something. They just couldn't stand still. So they are looking toward the future and they are moving forward. And I think given all of the issues that are surrounding this, I think the best thing for the New York Knicks to do is actually move forward. But I wouldn't read too much into this as a Knicks fan. Yes, it's nice to see that Carson Shanks used to be with the Bucks. Yes, it's nice to see that he's climbing the ranks in the NBA. It's great to see that he's a quality addition. And I think that's what we should take out of it. We shouldn't take out of it. Oh, the Knicks have signed him. We're one step closer to getting Giannis. If that's what you're thinking with this addition, I would take both feet out, dry them, keep them dry, and go back and sit on your couch. That is not what I'm saying here. It's nice to see. It's nice to note. But really... Everything being considered, it really doesn't mean anything about Giannis coming to the Knicks. And I don't really think it even influences Giannis coming to the Knicks. But if Giannis already agreed to come to the Knicks and this guy's already on the staff, it's nice to have. And he'd probably be like, oh, that's great. But I don't think it's a make it or break it 
for Giannis joining the Knicks because of this news. So I just wanted to point it out there. But it is good to note this, and it's always good to understand what key additions the New York Knicks add in any form or fashion to their coaching staff. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment below, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.